rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, every single day in Ramadan, alhamdulillah, we've had people embracing our faith, alhamdulillah, accepting Islam, uh, morning and evening, bukratan wa ishiyya, alhamdulillah, this is from Allah's blessings upon us. And today we have brother Makut, mashallah, alhamdulillah, he's with his Muslim friends and colleagues here. So brother Makut, how did you hear of Islam and what is the, uh, one of the main things that attracted you to the faith? I heard about Islam from my friends when I met them like 10 years ago and then you know over time um, seeing how they, cl they were close to their faith, how like you know prayer made them succeed in life, excel in life, I just felt like I wanted that kind of you know blessing for myself as well. So Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless your friends. May Allah bless you. This is how da'wah is done at the individual level through one's akhlaq. So Brother Makut, I'm going to say the shahada in Arabic and then in English. So repeat after me. Ashhadu Ashhadu Allah Allah Ilaha Ilaha Illallah Illallah Wa Wa Ashhadu Ashhadu Anna Anna Muhammadan Muhammadan Rasulullah Rasulullah I testify I testify that there is no god except Allah that there is no god except Allah and that Muhammad and that Muhammad peace be upon him peace be upon is him is the messenger of Allah is the messenger of Allah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar MashaAllah his takbir is louder than yours guys <laughs> MashaAllah welcome to our faith welcome to our fraternity you're part of our ummah alhamdulillah you're surrounded by your friends but now you've increased your family by a billion we have 1.5 billion Muslims you're all a member of our family alhamdulillah welcome and inshallah after the khutbah you will get a, 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 a bag of books and others and other things that will benefit you and be a part of our community anything you need we're here for you inshallah, inshallah. Khair. so brothers because of the rain we are delayed so I'm going to be giving a, a very short Assalamu alaikum. Um, after the khutbah, please stay seated. Ustad Bajur have some messages. Um, uh, it's going to be a small, quick fundraising about the 313. Inshallah, you know about it. So after the khutbah, please stay seated. Assalamu <coughs> alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة Hiya 
على الفلا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Amma ba'd. Dear Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated fasting for a higher purpose. The goal is not to abstain from food and drink. The goal is not to be hungry and tired. The goal is not to observe an outer ritual only. There is a higher goal that is explicitly mentioned in the Quran. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon O you who believe fasting has been ordained for you as it was ordained for many generations and many ummas before you you are not the first to fast fasting has been ordained for you so that you may achieve taqwa so the fast of Ramadan is meant for the higher purpose of achieving taqwa. In today's very brief khutbah, I will go over some of the mechanisms of how and why fasting achieves taqwa. Because when we understand the ultimate goal, then the journey becomes easier. When we have the destination in mind, then the hurdles that we face getting there, we have more himma and courage to overcome those hurdles. And in today's brief khutbah, I will list three specific aspects of the fast that actually taps into the higher goal of taqwa. Three specific aspects of our ritual that is actually demonstrative. We're doing this ritual for a higher goal. The first of them, number one, what the fast does that allows us to achieve God consciousness taqwa is to inculcate in our hearts a level of sincerity and a level of awareness that Allah is watching us. Sincerity, ikhlas. Fasting is the one deed you cannot do to show off. Nobody can monitor your fast. Not even your wife, not even your child, not even your mother. Anybody can break the fast secretly and nobody will be the wiser. The only mechanism we have to perfect our fast is to know Allah is watching. Is to know we are doing this for the sake of Allah. And therefore, automatically, our fast, it is our going to the gymnasium of ikhlas. We are working out our sincerity to Allah. Day in, day out, morning, afternoon, late afternoon, evening. We're tired, we're thirsty. We can go quietly and go and take some water drinks. No, we will not do so. Why? Allah is watching. Allah is watching, even if nobody else is watching. And so for 30 days, we are going to the gymnasium of ikhlas, of sincerity. For 30 days, we are inculcating the sense of Allah is watching. Allah is sami' Allah is basir. And that is the essence of taqwa. Because taqwa literally translates as God consciousness. That is the literal meaning of taqwa. That you are aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. And 
Sincerity is demonstrated primarily through the fast. No other good deed. The prayer we come, everybody can watch us. The sadaqah we give, everybody can see when we give the sadaqah. As for fasting, the only being that can monitor it is Allah. And therefore, of the strongest mechanisms of establishing taqwa is the fortification of sincerity. The, the awareness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. And that is my first point about how the fast helps us in the broader goal of taqwa. Point number two of the mechanisms that help to achieve taqwa is the very important concept of being patient and sabr, of sabr. Being patient, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises sabr in the Quran. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the pinnacle of iman is sabr. The pinnacle of iman is sabr. What is sabr? Sabr means to withhold and restrain your actions, to control the tongue, to control one's emotions. Sabr means to act in a manner that is in conformity with the sharia. Ah. And sabr is a very, very difficult reality to achieve. There are many ways to do it, but without a doubt, the number one mechanism to achieve sabr is via the mechanism of fasting. Fasting helps us be patient. Obviously it does. Because if patience means to withhold and restrain, if patience means to control, you know when you're angry, sabr comes and keeps your anger in check. You don't act upon anger. When you want to say something nasty, vulgar, when you're angry, oh, sabr comes in. And sabr says, nope, control your tongue. Sabr says, act in a dignified manner. Sabr says, don't say or do anything except that Allah will be pleased with it. How do we fortify our sabr? Well, what better way to do so than to train our body when we're hungry, no eating and drinking. When we're thirsty, nothing for us to quench that thirst. Why? Because we are fortifying the mechanism of sabr in our lives. In fact, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, As-sawmu nisfu as-sabri. Fasting is half of conquering patience. If you want to achieve 100% marks in patience, half of it is by fasting. And the other half, by other mechanisms, knowing who Allah is and reading the Quran and Sunnah, and other aspect. 50% of your final exam on sabr, 50% of your grade on sabr, you can get it via the mechanism of what? Fasting. And obviously, what fasting does, we are once again forcing our body to be controlled by our soul. We are literally controlling via the sheer power of our will and our iman. We are showing ourselves when Allah says don't do, I will not do. When Allah says do not cross this line, I will not cross this line. The body is screaming. It wants its food. It wants its caffeine. It wants its water. And the soul says no. Sabr, sabr, sabr. Until Maghrib, we will not do anything. And once again, we are inculcating and we are nourishing the beauty of sabr in our qulub. And therefore, this is one of the strongest mechanisms of how the fast is going to make us of the muttaqeen. Because you can't have taqwa without sabr. You cannot achieve God consciousness without being a patient person. And what is patience? Patience is to control one's desires. That's the literal meaning of patience. Your anger is there. Your frustration is there. Your sadness is there. Whatever the emotion is, is there. In Allah's mercy, emotions are not sinful. But patience tells us to keep the emotions in check and to not act upon the emotions except in a manner that will be pleasing to Allah. So come Ramadan and we have the physical emotion, if you like, of hunger. We have the bodily emotion of wanting to be quenched. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us the reality of sabr through psalm. So once again, point number two here. How does one achieve taqwa? By mastering patience. And the fast of Ramadan will help us master patience. Point number three. You cannot have taqwa. You cannot be of the people who are God conscious unless and until you are treating mankind in an ethical manner, in a manner that exudes mercy and compassion. Taqwa 
automatically indicates good manners and akhlaq. There is no such thing as taqwa and rudeness, taqwa and arrogance, taqwa and harshness. The muttaqi, his heart is soft not only to Allah but especially to the creation. The longest series of verses that describes the muttaqin at the end of Surah Al-Furqan. It's literally a page and a half of description after description. Multiple characteristics of that description involves how you treat other people. In fact, the very first characteristic, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا the servants of Ar-Rahman are those who walk on this earth with ultimate humility and modesty. And when the ignoramus want to have a fight, they say, Salam, peace, we're not involved in bad manners. Subhanallah, how does one master good akhlaq? How does one treat people the way they deserve to be treated? Once again, come the month of Ramadan and the Muslim ummah Wallahi, it is a miracle. No matter their level of iman outside the month, the ummah, wallahi, its iman is alive. And let nobody tell you contrary to this. The ummah, yes, there are bad things that we have to criticize. But as a whole, the heart is beating and it is beating hard. And how do you know this? Look at the month of Ramadan across the Muslim world. Wherever you are, without a doubt, people's generosity people's religiosity. The masajid are packed to capacity during this month every single day. That is not a show. That is not one-off. Everybody controls the tongue. Everybody wants to act more ethical. Everybody is trying to control their temper. And they start treating people in a better manner than they do outside the month. And this is of the essence of taqwa. To control one's interactions with people and to treat people in the best of manners and to be as polite and kind and as merciful and as generous this is of the essence of taqwa karam generosity and the month of ramadan is the month of generosity no poor person ever goes hungry in ramadan every community opens its doors every masjid opens its doors for the people to come for the people to be fed and this is the essence of taqwa. You cannot have taqwa unless and until you are treating the people the way they deserve to be treated. And in this month of Ramadan, what did our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say? When one of you is fasting, then even if an ignorant person comes and curses you, even if a foolish person comes, tries to provoke you, you say, Allahumma inni sa'im. Oh Allah, I am fasting. You remind yourself, you can't go there. If somebody else does something, you cannot resort to that level. And so, one of the mechanisms of mastering taqwa via the fast of Ramadan is by conquering our bad manners and by treating people with the utmost compassion and kindness and good akhlaq. And there are many other things that can be said, but because of time, we will limit ourselves to these three. Number one, sincerity and the awareness Allah is watching us. Number two, the mastery of sabr and patience. And number Number three, the perfection of one's akhlaq. And inshallah, next week we will continue on the same vein. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me and you with and through the Quran. And may He make us of those who its verses they understand and applies halal and haram throughout our lifespan. I ask Allah's forgiveness. You as well ask Him for He is the Ghafoor and the Rahman. Alhamdulillah. All praise is due to Allah, the one and the unique. He it is whom we worship, and it is his aid that we seek. He is the Lord of the oppressed, and he hears the prayer of the weak. As to what follows, the blessings of taqwa are, are too numerous to mention. And of the greatest of those blessings, because we want to achieve taqwa, and Ramadan allows us to achieve taqwa. So, by incentivizing taqwa, by making us want to be of the people of taqwa, this should incentivize us to fast the month of Ramadan. Once we know how blessed taqwa is, once we know Ramadan and the siyam is meant for us to achieve taqwa, then we should be motivated to perfect our fasts in order to achieve taqwa. And the blessings of taqwa are too many to list, but we'll mention one or two things for today. Of them, and perhaps the greatest of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lists only very few things in the Quran and says Allah loves those people. 
Hardly 12 are mentioned. Wallahu yuhibbu. Hardly 12. And one of them, multiple verses. Wallahu yuhibbu al-muttaqeen. When you achieve taqwa, you achieve the elite status of becoming beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you achieve taqwa, Allah loves you. And when Allah loves you, then you have achieved success. So taqwa guarantees Allah's mahabbah. And with Allah's mahabbah comes so many other blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran regarding the people of taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ My rahmah, my mercy, encompasses every created being. In other words, without Allah's mercy, we will not be here. Every one of us, there's Allah's mercy encompassing us. But some people get Allah's rahmah more than others. Who are those people? وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ I will apportion my mercy. The bulk of my mercy, I will write it for those who have taqwa. Everybody must be immersed in Allah's mercy to live, or else we wouldn't be here without Allah's rahmah. But some people will get the lion's share of Allah's rahmah. And Allah tells us in the Quran, who are those people? I will write my mercy. My mercy has been a portion for those who have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa of Allah brings about Allah's blessings in this world and the next. If only the people had iman and taqwa, Allah says, I would open up the doors of the heavens and earth and every good will fall upon them. Allah says in the Quran, Whoever has the taqwa of Allah, I will help him from sources he never expected. And I will make a way out for him from places he never knew would help him. Whoever has the taqwa of Allah, Allah will help him in this world and the next. Allah's mercy surrounds and envelopes him. Allah loves him. Allah shall protect him from every calamity in the next life. Taqwa of Allah is our ticket to salvation. Taqwa of Allah is our ticket to salvation. And the fast of Ramadan helps us to achieve the best ticket. Therefore, brothers and sisters, embrace the fast of Ramadan. Thank Allah that Allah in His mercy has literally gifted us the reality of fasting so that we can achieve the higher purpose of taqwa. Thank Allah for being of the Ummah of Islam. Thank Allah for being where we are. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, who, who has guided us to this. Alhamdulillah. Allah <laughs> الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بسوء فاشغله بنفسه وجعل تدميره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملاكة قدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله تعالى يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم اذكركم واشكروه يزد لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا 
استو اعتدلوا الله اكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين فمن تطوع فهو خير له وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر 
الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sister, are you ready? Yes, Imam. Yes, okay. uh, first, let's at, uh, ask you, inshallah, what did uh, attract you to Islam? What was that? He said, what attracted you to Islam? The, the, how the love for each other and how everybody comes together as a community. Allahu Akbar. This is uh, just the beginning, inshallah ta'ala. You're going to see more things that we'll love about Islam, bi ta'ala. So repeat after me. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa. Wa. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Rasulu. Wa Rasulu. Allah. Allah. I bear witness. I bear witness that that there's none worthy of worship. That there's none worthy of worship except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that Muhammad. That Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is his final messenger. Is his final messenger. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, my sister. May Allah keep you steadfast on this deen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you a reason for others to join the deen. My brothers and sisters, you know, these are the things that happen at Epic daily. And whoever supports Epic is supporting all these kinds of activities and all these kinds of shahadas and all these kinds of people coming back to the deen. So we have a campaign called 313 where it's going after the 313 people of Badr that kept this deen going. So inshallah ta'ala, we're looking for a few people to give us a monthly donation. Can you please sit down, Muhammad? A monthly donation, uh, give us the credit card, and we have a recurring payment. So anybody would like to give us $500 a month for the sake of Allah, for the masjid? Allah, <laughs> Habibi, <laughs> mashallah, one of our most beloved doctors. Anybody else, $500? Right there. Jazakallah khair. Please fill it up and give it back to anybody from the volunteers, please. Anybody else? Okay, I don't want to go 200 and 300 and whatever. We're going to just go for $100. I need 20 people for $100 to support our masjid. You know our brothers, my brothers and sisters, this masjid is not supported by any country or anything. It's all us between us. So $100 a month. Barakallah feek, please make sure. 20 people only. $100 a month. Barakallah feek, brother. Jazakallah khair. Two. Hundred dollars a month. Three. Four. Mashallah, four. Sixteen more. This is for the house of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is for the house of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Mashallah. Barakallah, five. 
Brothers, when you are looking at your uh, credit card bill, you see uh, uh, electricity, you see water, you see uh, internet, and then you see Epic. Allahu Akbar. Barakallah feek. Zakallah khair. You know, subhanallah, mashallah, barakallah feek. So Epic is going to put barakah in the rest of the things that you spend in the month. You know, subhanallah, when it comes to the house of Allah, جل, we hesitate and we think so many times. And the shaitan comes and promises us poverty. Yalla ya akhwan, hundred dollars a month. Don't let the shaitan, this is the first Friday of Ramadan. This is the first Jum'ah of Ramadan, subhanallah. It's Ramadan, it is Jum'ah, it is a blessing, all kinds of blessings today. Hundred dollars, anybody else for hundred dollars? Sisters, please be generous, we always count on you. Five, how about fifty dollars a month? How about the youth? Fifty dollars a month, ya akhwan. Fifty dollars for the, for the house of Allah. Fifty dollars a month, anybody? Anyone, fifty dollars? Inshallah, any amount you want, any amount, just take a pledge card and put any amount. But please do not let this barakah go away. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.